Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another fan mini episode of Catch That, where we get to know our friends through their favorite R&B songs. I am Nacho Elise, and that's my brother. Yeah, you are. And we are the R&B representatives. And today, we are very happy to welcome Cameron. What's going on, y'all? Thank y'all so much for having me. I, I should have been here a long time ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> All that matters is you're here now. Hey, Amen, somebody. somebody. Yeah, and we're very <laughs> excited about it. So, Cam, before we get um, into your song, just let us know a little bit about yourself and anything you would like the people to know about you. Okay. Well, I'm definitely um, an R&B music lover. I would love to call myself a connoisseur, but I think after watching you guys represent R&B, I maybe am not that. <laughs> but oh, I know a God. little something. <laughs> I know a little something, and um, it's something near and dear, close to my heart. Music kind of lives in me um, and naturally breathes through me, always has. It's influenced me as I'm an aspiring artist myself and have finally gotten started with the process of coming out with my own music. So I will hope to um, make that available within the next year. Uh, lots of politics, definitely wanting to be independent this time around. So um, it has come with its challenges, but my biggest goal right now is just focusing creatively and uh, positioning myself to give something great. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the core essence of me, uh, and it's why I'm here today. Yes. So, how about you tell us what song you picked to talk to us about today, and if you remember the first time hearing it? Yes. So, uh, I picked You're My Star by Tank. The real babs, I believe. Yes. And <laughs> the first time I heard that song was on V103 in Atlanta. Um, I should know the year it came out, but I don't. Uh, it's been a long time ago. It's been it's been a going on ten years for sure. Yes, yeah. and um, <laughs> I remember hearing that record. I was in the car getting off of work, and you know, an exclusive was being aired, and I felt like that was that record was his shot to me at the time because I hadn't really heard anything like that from him in that way. Um. And so I love the record. I play it all the time. It's surprising to me how many people don't know it um, as well or consider it to be one of his best offerings as an artist, as a vocalist. He is doing anything you can do in a classic R&B record he is doing in that song. And that song feels so many different ways when you, when you break it up. So uh, that's my song that I picked. And I, I love this song. Yes. And and one thing you said, uh, it it was it was nice hearing him on a song like that to hear him on an up tempo because you know you're used to Tank, but he's like very slow, very intense, very mm -hmm. like sexually charged like mm -hmm. type of songs, which he does on a very high level. But it was nice to to hear him out of that box, and the fact that he produced and wrote that song. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's and fabulous. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that that you mentioned, Elise, is that what we know Tank for, and one thing I love about that record, in my opinion, is that he never leaves that in that song. If you take the track away and just let him let the vocals fly, you still got this really sensual, passionate yes. um, ballad um, yep. underneath all of that, mm -hmm. and. There are moments where there's a change in pace, but like he manages not to lose like the core of who he is as an artist in that record. It's just somehow it was made to, you know, still make you want to dance and everything. And that's something that I feel like our up tempo records today really, really miss. They miss that. There's a, a passion that's lacking and he he knows how to navigate through a song. Um just an instrumental in, in general. So with this, he, he rolled that all the way through. Yeah, speaking of the damn instrument, you know when I first heard that, that I heard that horn. Yeah. I was like, first of all, I didn't even know it was him at first. Yeah. I was like, who is this? And when it came in, and you know when Tank sings, 
you know his little nuances. So yeah. as soon as he started singing, I said, oh, that's Tay. I said, now, wait a minute. Now, he just gave us the Please Don't Go as the first single. So I'm like, where is he at with this? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, he got me boogieing, too. Like, yes. you know what I mean? And, and then, obviously, what caught me again was the baseline to Heartbreak Hotel from, the, yes. you know, the Jacksons. It's the baseline. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm not calling it this place hotel. Y'all Elvis fans can go somewhere with that mess because I'm not doing it. I'm calling it. Because why do I have hotel. this place hotel written down uh, just to make sure I was politically correct? It's oh, no. Uh-uh. You can. Uh-uh. I'm not doing that. Them Elvis fans can have it because he ain't even write it. So stop. So Heartbreak hotel, <laughs> Heartbreak hotel with that bass line. I was like, yo, who produced this? So that's when the line of notes came in me and it was him. And I was mm-hmm. like, yo, and yo, on, not him, And not him and somebody else. Him. Yeah. Him. And anybody that can think of the changes that you go through, the steps that that record goes through, you know, <laughs> that's a genius. Because it, yeah. the record is moving in different directions almost it every is. minute until it's over. <laughs> that's yes. true. You know? That's true. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it starts with like the dun, dun, then it comes in, and then you get the break. Then you yep. get the when it stops, and then I'm gonna hold it up. What you up? Uh, like his little rap, you know what I'm saying? And yep. then it changes again, and it's like yes, it goes through. Gives, uh, it goes through, and then he adapted. Not so the track does that in general, but then he adapted his writing and his delivery to still go through those same steps. So you got these changes in pace where you have like the the pre-chorus where he's kind of stepping through it and it speeds up a little bit. Well, let me get a little bit closer. Really want to be in this color. And then it slows back down into the hook. And it's just, yeah. star. and it's just real smooth and cute. And then it goes back into the verse and it slows yeah. down even more. Like it's a ballad and he's really yeah. singing. He's holding out words and then it speeds right back up into the pre-chorus again. And yeah. then the the ending vamp that where he took the end, it gets yeah. very black to me. That's it what does. I call it. It gets very black to me. It like does. you know, the beginning of it is very like I don't want to be politically correct, but it's very mainstream ish. Like I can see this being played on a crossover radio station, but when we mm-hmm. got to that break. It got very black, and I was just like, mm-hmm. and he know Tank is like the aunties and the uncles is about to get down at that part, like yes. at a festival, a wine festival, whatever. We getting it mm-hmm. in, like. <laughs> yep, and you see, well, and you see what happened back in the day. You ended up having a a line dance, and they had little challenges before they were TikTok. Uh, he that he moment. definitely had a moment with that. Um, yes, he did. But the record does so much. So when I want to when I want to feel a lot of different elements. Instead of playing multiple songs, I just turn that record on because you're gonna get three songs in one, maybe four. <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing to touch on something y'all said, and I'm not gonna be politically correct, but during this time, Tank got a lot of flack for statements that he was making that was very true about that songs that sounded like that. The white mainstream, the white, well, they weren't right. mainstream. Yeah, they were new artists were getting songs like this, and they were blowing the fuck up and they yeah. weren't better singers than Tank. They, mm-hmm. you know, they they didn't have better charisma yeah. than him. It was just simply because yeah. they were, were white and he got a lot of flack for saying that, but he didn't tell no lie. No. No, because um, let's just Sam say Smith just was blowing up. got that whole outcome would have been totally different. Totally. Absolutely. And, and mind you, Justin had just came out with that 2020 project literally right. Um, uh, you know, a, a year before, so now it looks like Tank is following. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But at least Tank's was actually more genuine. It was. Uh, I I believe Tank's music, yes. or I believe that song. Justin yeah. had gotten to a place in his career where I didn't believe it anymore. Sounds good. It's it, but the music was starting to feel more like a formality versus like you know something that's true to your core. You listen yeah. to. You listen to Justified and you get a different feel. You feel like he's trying to love the music that he is giving us. And then you go later into his career up until what the last album 
and it's more it felt more manufactured. So Tank didn't come to uh come to the table with that. You could tell that he loved the record through and through. And that that a part of that at least too comes from having his hand on everything, being in charge of where that goes. Cause you can lose that when you're in writing camps and production camps and you got multiple hands in. Um if you don't know directionally where you want to go on a record, you end up adapting to everybody else's vision as an artist and you're just trying to see it through at that point. And I think that's been happening to Justin Timberlake for a long time. But um, in terms of this record, because he had that creative control in every capacity, he just kept building upon it. He, it, it was crazy. And the thing about it, you don't, when the song goes off, you don't even feel like too much was done, but you don't win a million places. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like the fact that how we said in the beginning how Tank is known for the ballads and the this. He he was showing himself growing as an artist with this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was just something completely different. And I think when this album didn't do great, because honestly, this stronger album is my favorite album from Tank. It's my favorite from him. And I think it hurt him. Because this is when he went like on a rant, like Elise said, about, you know, other artists getting better promotion behind them. Atlantic didn't promote it like they should have. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, he was like, yo, I put my all into this and nothing came of this. And that's why he was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to the Win Wees and I'm going to go back there now. Because right. that seems like that's the only way y'all respect me is through that. But when I try to be an artist, not saying let's fuck. I'm trying to say you're my star. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to really be smooth. And y'all looking at me like, what is this? You know what I mean? And it was just like, that's why he was like, you know what? I'm about to take the independent route. I can't do this. Because I tried to be an artist. I tried to do something different. I did an amazing record. Because you're my star is an amazing record. Period. From beginning to end. That's a five minute song that is just it never gets old. You know what I mean? Beautiful like it, build, too. The build is... Yes! Yeah, it, that, it, yeah the song is... It's, it's very complex without you noticing. Like, you're just yeah. in it. But when you go back and talk about it, like we are, we're like, oh, it, like, like Cam said, every minute it was doing something different. But it all... Mm -hmm. It was very so, cohesive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's complex on the low. Yeah. Um, is it true or not that Kelly Rowland is doing the female background vocals? I thought I heard that, but I didn't know if it was true. I was going to ask y'all. I had that right here. I sure did. <laughs> I'm about to get on I'm, You know I'm about to see. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, because I, I heard that before, but I didn't know if it was true. It sounds like her. It does sound like her. And this and they is do. What, they have worked together for sure. Um, so right. that would not be surprising. But then um, I mean, also Tank is good with his own backgrounds as well. So maybe yeah. it could be just him. You know what I mean? But I always heard that it was Kelly, and I didn't know if it was true or not. And so I was going to ask you. All. <laughs> she and that is true. She was. Uh, she did do background vocals on that record. She did. Oh, mm -hmm. come on, Kelly. Come on, Kelly. Yeah. And that's why now it makes a lot of sense. You remember when Tank was on another podcast or whatever, and it was they was asking him about Kelly, and he was going up for her more yes. than he did be. And a lot yeah. of people didn't understand it, but mind you, he has worked with this girl. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. he done did a song with her. And then now knowing the backgrounds on this, I know he probably was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, and her and her backgrounds on that were brief but perfect. Like it, it yeah. was perfect. But Tank has done background vocals for her. <clears throat> oh, um, let's see now. I ain't too big on her discography, but for what I do know, um, they have a song called "The Show," right? A record yes. called the show. Yes. Um and that's the only I collaborative know, I mean, effort I know of between that can those two. Be, I I know he wrote a record on the uh not the one with motivation, that album. He I think he got a song on that one. 
if I'm not mistaken. I can't tell you the title. I don't, don't want to lie here. But, yeah, so Tank's been around, so now it makes sense why he goes up for her because I didn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, people throw it out there, but I paid it no mind. I was like, maybe Tank did his own backgrounds because he can, but yeah. It, now it definitely sounds like Kelly. Absolutely, yeah, but it's it brief. Does. It's very brief. It's very brief. Are there definitely. any are there any other artists that y'all could see carrying out that record and the changes that it goes through? No. Mm -mm. Um I I can't. Yes, I got one. I got one, I think. I think Joe can go toe for toe with this song. Ooh. He would sing it different, oh. but he would but he would mm -hmm. but it would work. I can see that. He would sing it different, but he would still I think he could still match that intensity that Tank brought to it, especially at the end. Yeah. And yeah. Joe is not Joe don't play about his BGBs either. He gonna he gonna layer some vocals. He's gonna stack it down. Um there may be a couple couple more. Joe might even take it a little. He he could take it and might Jonah, even add a little bit that, to it. Um, you know what else, who else I would think would do it? And I'm gonna shout out our friend. I think Darren Brockington would fucking kill it. Oh Darren Brock, let me see. I can see the, that. He got the fucking range and he got the intensity. Yeah. He, he definitely got the range. But yeah. I, I can see that. That leads it, it, me to that leads me to Eric Bellinger as well. Now From I can agree. I, come on. That's what I was about to go with. You you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah. What he said? I can in this in the studio and that's it. No oh. lies, no none of that. Yeah, we're not gonna perform it live or nothing, but we're not yeah. gonna perform that live, no. See, Tay can do that song live. Joe yes, which can I do that song live. Mind you, I would never want to attempt that song live. I, I would never. Ooh. Oh to, because I wouldn't even trust thick... the band to even keep up with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because it's the it's the like you said, it's the vocal things, the acrobatics that he's doing in it, and it just it seems so, it's just smooth, but he's really singing in this record, like he's really singing Woo! I think Maxwell could really do it singing. who? Ma ooh. who? Maxwell. Maxwell shit, he got a bunch of songs like that song, so yeah he do, he do <laughs> I just had to thank you. Yeah, for yeah, he can. Yeah. He could. He could do it live too. Yep. Uh, he sure could. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But hearing this song, of course, I've never heard anybody else do it. But I feel that. I mean, we know it was Taylor made for Tank because he did everything. He wrote it and he produced it. Right. Yes. And you know, right. he he also works very closely with Latoya Luckett as well. So yeah. I would. I wouldn't mind hearing what she could what she could contribute to that because um he's very passionate about her voice and, and producing her too. So I think yeah, she would yeah. make a cute version on the other side as well. Yeah, I can see that. Yes. I can <laughs> catch all Love of it, y'all. All of it. <laughs> That's fine. Y'all gonna y'all gonna be saying that about me too on some of these records coming up, and it's fine. Um, that's my voice, though. That's my voice, though. <clears throat> that's all we gotta know. <laughs> no, but yeah, man. I just with and then in the video is dope too. Like it's just the whole. You know, I've never seen the video. That was very I have, cool. I've never really. Seen the video. It's black mm -hmm. and white. They dancing. It's very slick. It's very. Oh, very no, I gotta slick. watch that. And the take is that. not giving much. Because we all know he probably is not the dancer type. So don't look for that. No, He's giving no. a little bit of that. But, but he's he giving just enough of, of that. He got rhythm, yeah. though. He's he giving just enough. That's that's why they invented background dancers to, right. to give you that while you, you do your, you sang now. Oh, right. yeah. I need to see this because I have not, I have not, I did not know that. Really? Because the break, it's the break. And he he's doing his little Thing, you know I was saying? always like, disappointed that I felt like the record didn't stretch far enough, considering 
it was one of those songs to me that didn't really require even a lot from a label perspective because it was just that great that I expected us at least to pick up on what that record was given because we don't get songs like those every day. No, we don't. No, we don't. And for it not to hit the way it did, but just like I said, everybody was thinking he's following Justin because Justin mm. had that style. You know what I'm saying? This is the stuff he's coming off that 2020. So everybody's looking at Tay. And then I think Atlantic didn't push it like they should. They just sent it to the black stations and said, there you go. And that's right. it. They didn't send it to these other stations and was like, y'all, this new record from Tank, you should play it. Let him come up here and do an interview. Let him talk about the song. Let him do all that. Atlantic said, no, we're going to keep you urban. And hey, mm -hmm. it may hit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it just went to us. And then once you know this is online, so now people are online with it. Oh, he's trying to sound like Justin, and it didn't make it any better that he went to the studio and played stuff for Justin, and they got him and Justin and Timberland in the studio, and he's playing the record. For it just did not go right at all. I so was always confused at how Justin and Tank Though they were in a um, connection, I personally never connected those two, even yeah, with huh? hearing the music, because yeah. it's given two different things. And when Complete. that information started coming out, I was just, I remember thinking like, people who thinking about Justin Timberlake probably aren't thinking too much about Tank and vice versa. So I was always confused at how the top, the two came together anyway. I used to be on two Twitter arguing. All, all the time. I used to be like, y'all, this album sounds nothing like that. Just yeah. because Tank is wearing a black suit with a white shirt, y'all thinking, oh, it's the same. Like, no, mm -hmm. like, it's not. You got Timbaland producing his, and you got Jerry Wonder that's helping producing some of his stuff. And Tank's producing his own stuff. So it's a completely different vibe. But again, mm -hmm. we know how social media do. You know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a bandwagon thing when it comes to support. It's like when one person feels something, for some reason, they did. everybody else has to feel that way. So It's freaking annoying. It's so annoying because I really – this was the record that should have really took Tank over. Like, this I was agree. it. You know At what I mean? If, if, not for, if not for the world or music in general, I think yeah. it could have at least did something for us. Because we didn't even absorb it the way that I thought yes. that we would have absorbed it. We didn't. Um, we did not. And, and hearing it today, it sound. I mean, it still fits. It, it just still fits into everything that's going on now in music. It's a it's a strong ass song. It, <laughs> you know, it, as as him. It, if you ask him to play whatever his favorite record is, if I was him, that's the one that I would. Who is Tank? I'm I'm gonna turn that one on. And it's Absolutely. it's not. It's not defining when it comes to like what he kind of demonstrates as an artist overall, because like Elise was saying earlier, he's a little slower, um, more passionate. It's more of yeah. a sensual message, so on and so forth. But if I wanted to show somebody everything I could do, that would be the song I would definitely play. Yeah. You know, to sit to get another deal and say, hey, you know what. What can you do? I would be like play play your Masar, just so you can get an idea of where all of this can go. But that's how Elise always says too, as far as putting people in a box. I think a lot of people could not accept Tank doing a record like this. They wanted. That's why as soon as he was done with this, and I think he went to TGT, if I'm not mistaken. They did. They you know that was a mess with it. I was def I was definitely gonna comment on that because I felt like it would have been a different reception if TGT had that record. It would have been a different Ooh. story. Ooh, you got a point. You got a point. Yeah, it would have been a different story. Now he might have been able to close it out the way that he closed the record out, but Tyrese and Genuine would have done something on the first two two rounds before the song finished That would have been dope for them three yeah. to do a record like this. Because that album was amazing. It would have been, oh my God, that would have been so, I never thought about that. That would have been so crazy with mm -hmm. them three on a record like this. It would have been something different and fresh. 
You know yep. what I'm saying? But I think and I don't think we would have really seen anything on that level. We haven't seen anything like that from male artists since probably Belle Biv DeVoe. Um, in terms of having the three rock it out, I think performance wise, it would have been a cool thing to see those yeah, three but in it, that record. But they kind of, I think they knew what the audience was. We're going to make the balance. We're going to be the LG, we're going to be the LSG part two. That's what we're yes. going to do. Yes. Now, see, this could have been LSG with a couple of dance moves. Missed opportunity. Yeah. No, you can't even say, oh, we're trying to be LSG because LSG had hits that were up tempos as well. You got yeah. a point there. Curious like a motherfucker. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. So You're if they could have right. did that, and it, I think it would have worked. And I think it, it would have been, people wouldn't have been expecting it. And it would have, I don't know. You know, you, we never know what in time would have happened, but it would have been right. interesting to see that. It would have gave, yeah, I, I like, think, like, he... ooh. Yeah, and then you had two other fan bases to also buy into it as well. So I think naturally right. more people would have people would have come to the record just for Tyrese. People would have come to the record just for Genuine. People would have come to it for Tank. People would come for all three or whoever that person was. And um, I think it would have been awesome. Um, so yeah, I will always feel like that was a missed opportunity. And I think it still fit into the aesthetic of the TGT album too. So yep. it would have been nice to to see that happen. Um, I think aesthetically it would it could have been dope. I would I'm gonna have to watch the video to see it <laughs> to confirm that later. If I you gonna like, see you you, know. you you can see you can, but genuine, this genuine book, like, is a dancer, so that that would have automatically been something right there too. Right, His smoothness and you know he's no stranger yeah. to the camera. So I think what they could have gave would have been pretty awesome actually. I think so too. I think so too. Damn, what a missed opportunity! But Tank still yes. killed it by himself. But he it did. He dope. he defined it by himself. But I think for the right. best exposure and and yeah, the best you know bang for the buck would have been having all three of them on that. Never I'm just now imagining. I'm just imagining the other two voices just in even in the background vocals or the hook. Tyrese has a oh. husk. He has like a a dryness, not in a bad way, but he has this husky, mm -hmm. uh, smoky tone that I think would have been real nice to start it off. And then Genuine, he kind of, he throws in a punch with his vocals and mm -hmm. that would have been nice. And then Tank is big with his, so he's going to he's gonna close that out and to have and all three of them assisting at the end would be really nice. And then to see them do that live somewhere, that have been so ill, y'all. Like, oh, yes. oh my god! <laughs> because Kelly's portion, Kelly's backgrounds are in Genuine's range, so that that could have been that could have went a whole nother way. I think Cam, you good as somebody in our dog. <laughs> oh yeah, that that has always been the year. I, I look at these know. artists now, and I'm always like, all right, y'all could have did this. What's going on with that? You know, I'm going yeah. through that currently with Chloe's album right now. I've revamped the whole entire setup, but that's oh, for another day. Me and Elise have, man, let me make sure. <laughs> <laughs> that be me and her on the phone like, why did they do this like this? Like, why didn't they do it this way? And About me everything. And her, uh, I don't understand. We, I'll we, never understand it. I, if I was her, I would literally be sitting in a label meeting like, so y'all just wanted me to have nice videos. Y'all could have just told me that. Because that's just Thanks. all I'm getting out of this project is nice visuals. And it's feeling very Tanache. It's feeling very Normani. And they need to make some changes really quick because she has uh, a lifetime talent that they need to use a, a lot better. And I know that she has that creative control right now um, as well. But if they want her to go as far as she absolutely can go, they're gonna have to reel that in too. Yeah. 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 Sorry, baby girl, but you can't you can't executive produce everything. Um that part. You can't be a tank like he did yeah. with this. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, I think sometimes. I think that she's gonna I think she's gonna get there, but I don't know that that's a that's not a debut album move. Um a lot yeah. of times the vision is just better seen by others when you are first yeah. starting out. And most artists hate that. You know, JoJo doesn't really care for her first album at all, but it's the best one she's still ever come out with. 
same for Brandy. It's like that that first album is just the production quality, the way that it hits, and what it how it performed also matters too because they tend to forget those numbers, and that's what people want to hear and see. But it matters, and so I'm happy that a black woman is able to have that level of control coming into a solo project because yeah. yeah. it's not something that you hear and they go through hell usually just to even release something but um i don't know there, there should have been some some light bulbs going off at listening at every stage to put the project together i think it's yeah. cohesive i think it's a good project but that was kind of like a freedom rider project for later on in the career to be able to say this is what That's i wanted true. to do and how i did it not necessarily yeah. a first but i yeah. agree I agree. I think, uh, thankfully for her, that in that machine, there's going to be some opportunities to get that right. They're not going to stop trying until it does what it needs to do. We may not. That's right. Yeah, we we may not see the same artist anymore. But um, my theory is that this is actually being done purposely to get them back together the way they were supposed to be. But we'll see. Got a point. So, there, I don't though. think she's supposed to be by herself. Not right nope. Now. I think that there was so much time that the the Little Mermaid required that this was a go do this right now and we'll hey let muse. It bring you back <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is my that's just my theory. This is my theory. Um but I don't think anyone had, you know, extremely huge expectations on it. But now you got the public saying, oh, you know, it's time to get back with your sister and all these things that we weren't generally feeling at first when they were together. You know, we That's were not true. as supportive of Chloe and Hallie when they first started. And it was very mm-hmm. conservative and it was bringing a great message to young women um, as well. And look how we handled that. Then she goes off, you know, kind of takes a dive off the deep end and people are like, oh, you know, what's going on? And Maybe they need to get back together. And I, I think that it's slowly leading to what was supposed to happen, which was for the success of the group. Yeah. yeah. But but you know what? And it's a private surprise, JNR. I mean it's JNR. This a private surprise, JR. I I rocked with uh with them together like real, real heavy. I listen Me I listen too. to I listen to them a lot more than anyone would probably think I did. Oh yeah, it shocked yeah. the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely um I like them together. The voices were so pure and I in the music it was just very it just made, it was yeah. it made me feel it good. It was complimentary it too. It feel corny to me. It just was yeah. it was sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, yeah. And you know what? I needed some sweet cuz we kind of been bombarded with with the opposite yes. of that. And yeah. so it was it was a breath <clears> of fresh air so that's why that their album really resonated with me a lot. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. When Ungodly Hour came out was when I woke up. Um. I have supported all of their albums. Um. Even with Chloe's, you know, I still go and do it because we don't get enough opportunities, so we can't afford to not support. Um, Be going at the end of the day. We just I'm, talk about that. Because, yeah, yeah, we don't have we don't have enough um opportunities, so it's like I'll help y'all till y'all get it right. You know, hopefully more people hear, but. I, Ungodly Hour was great. You know, I thought they did a good job in the way that uh, oh, there's a record. I'm not drawing a blank on it because they did a, vi- a a new visual for for the VMAs during quarantine. Uh, oh, well, the record's called Ungodly Hour. So that's the title yes. track of the album, right? Yes. Yeah. That was a moment where I felt like they should have been, they could have took the world over with where they were at in that moment. Um, I just thought it was amazing. And, you know, Quarantine 2020, the the pandemic did a lot to a lot of folks' albums. So, yeah, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's where that landed. It stopped touring. It just made things a lot more difficult. But we'll see how it goes. I think um, they're going to keep getting the chances, though. So eventually, they're going to make something that we are Some like, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's oh, going yeah. to happen. Oh, yeah. So, Kim, how about you tell us? How people can find you if you have anything going on right now that you want folks to know about, um, and, and any closing remark you want to say about the song or whatever. 
Okay. Well, I will. Um, I'll time. start with the song. So I think uh, for Tank, this is my, that's my favorite Tank record. Um, I think he showed his behind on it. I love where he takes you as a listener. I love that though so much was done, he did not do too much. Um, and I'm waiting on another record like that. <laughs> I'm waiting on another one like that. We've gotten we've gotten plenty in, in between that time, but um, that's that showed me what his real capability is. And I, mm-hmm. you know, you spoil somebody when you show them the best of what you can do. So I would love yeah. to see him in that light more and to not be afraid of the reception of that. Cause I know, you know, it's a business and everything, but just remember every album, every project, you could still slip one of those in for those deep. You know, you don't have to not do it because you feel like it's not appealing. There are, there are some of us that obviously love the record. So um, it's one of my favorites. I'm listening to it. When when we get up out of here, I'm just going to put it on to remind myself again of why, <laughs> why I did this today. Put on a video. And terms, yes. And in terms, yeah, I'm going to definitely play the video. In terms of myself, um, I'm strategically working on building my social media um, to prepare for my music. And I guess I'm going to start acting again. It looks like I didn't plan on that. So, um anything to kind of help build an audience for that because independently uh it's gonna require some some folks to pay attention so my hope is that the music is strong and um my instagram is cam said so you will go there and pretty much find a grocery store of different personality traits when it comes to me you're gonna get home decor you're going to get some dancing you're going to get a skit you're going to get some fashion uh you're going to get some vocals sparingly you're you know and and I'm continuing to grow that as um as I go so right now it's like a one-stop shop and and catering to a bunch of different audiences in order to eventually uh help me get to that place musically and that approach is working actually. So I'm going to keep on um, going in that direction. I have one of the most interactive social media accounts that I've seen for the size. Um, uh, engagement is great. You talk, I'm talking back. So I would love to, you know, uh, take this time to get to know more people, more music lovers, since that's a part of my life. It's definitely something you'll see when it comes to who I am and just growing that. Um, that's, that's my core at the end of the day. And I thank y'all for having me here today to talk about the record and my um, 2% shadiness and everything, you know, and it, it ain't nothing uh, against nobody Listen, you have talked about. <laughs> you're, you're on a show, catch that, please. You know how much shade yeah. we give? <laughs> All I said was some of y'all need to stay in the studio and y'all probably think that too. So it's okay. They know, yeah. we know. It's, it's like okay. I say the quiet part out loud. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. It's but right. we hope we hope when you do put some music out out here, if you will, that you come back and talk to us and we do a spotlight of you and we just yes. we really dig in to your song. That would yes. be insane because um y'all would have to be y'all are the first people I would want to talk to about it. Nobody else. So y'all got oh, that. Oh yes. Reserve. Oh yes. For sure. Um, And I just want it to be great. You know, I'm really at a place now where I, it's all or nothing. And and that's how, that's been my mentality in the studio lately. I don't like where something's going. It's like, well, we can, we can move on to something else. Um, And I'm not creatively handling this process either, not entirely. So I'm working with other minds and approaches to put this project together. And so that has brought up, you know, pop, that has brought up R&B, colliding those worlds, um, thinking about a stage aesthetic. So all those things go into it. But uh, my my goal is to entertain. I would love to embody a new era. Bobby Brown is like what I've been saying in my meetings that I'm taking. You know, I still want to dance as hard as I possibly can. I still need some space in between them lyrics so that I'm not sounding like I can't breathe. You know, it's it's 
different things. So when I when I sit down now and listen to different references, I'm like, yeah, y'all, the words are going too fast. I've been and got on stage and can't even keep up with that. You know? right. So I'm I'm thinking about everything right now, and um, I do have one one project already that's no longer out there, but um, I refer back to that project just to kind of remind me of where I need to pick up. Um, gotcha. Because I still don't even believe that music is me. At the end of the day, I listen to it. I'm like, wow, that's that's me. And I feel like I have, in order for me to put the next project out, I have to pass that. And that's my gotcha. goal. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've done that. Um, it could it could take a second, but my goal is definitely to have something out by the summer of next year. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all will be the first. Y'all will be the first to get it. All right. Yes. I'm excited um, and excited for all the things that you're doing. And yeah, again, we thank you. And we also thank all our viewers. Uh, we're a family here. So we always say, bring us some more cousins over here so we can just kick it and and just learn and, and, and appreciate this art form that we created, that our people created and just let it shine. Um, thank y'all for creating this space. This space is needed. And, um, you know, anything I can do to just keep putting this out there, this space out here, because these conversations are siloed across the world. Like, it's so many people that will, are going to be coming to this space to learn more and more as y'all grow, too. So any way I can help with that, I want to, for sure. Ah, y'all got this. Yeah. Y'all got this. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yes. <laughs> And make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And we will catch y'all on the next Catch That. Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another fan mini episode of Catch That. Well, we get to know our friends through their favorite R&B songs. I am Natalie Elise, and that's my bro. They are. And we are the R&B representers. And we are very happy to welcome today, Saint. Hello. Hello, everybody. How's it going? First to meet you all. Thank you for having me on your platform. I just always hide it and so ecstatic. Thank you. And we're excited to have you. Yes. So before we jump into um, your song, how about you tell us about yourself as little or as much as you like to share with the folks? Well, um, hello. Um, <laughs> um, so what got me into music um, really was James Brown. I was five and I was at a um, family friends. Well, it was it was a cookout. Let's just it was with melanated people. I'm just being honest. Black, <laughs> black cookout. And they played some James Brown. I was like, I don't know what this is, but it was like, I feel good. Doing it. And I started like doing some and started dancing and everybody started cheering me on. And I was like, I like this feeling. I want to keep doing this. And that's what got me into dance. But performing was Michael Jackson. When I saw Michael Jackson, you know, um, during, as you can obvious, obviously tell there's a generation difference. I am Gen Z. Yes, I know. I hear the boo, boo, Gen Z. I, just give us a chance. But, you know, when YouTube was first coming out, there was a lot of Michael Jackson clips, Michael Jackson videos. And when I saw Michael uh, Motown 25 when he was doing Billie Jean in the Moonwalk, I was like, oh, my God, like he looks just like me. And he, he's doing all this stuff. And <clears throat> during that time, um, Chris Brown was definitely getting in popularity, but we're obviously two different uh, melanin skin tones and features. He's extremely light skin. I'm brown skin dark skin and I have big anyhow with the I couldn't necessarily see myself doing some of the stuff he was doing but some of the stuff I was like that's stuff I just couldn't necessarily like on a physical kind of um sense I guess you know relate um I didn't really see much images of me uh in a positive sense during the mid to late 2000s I mean let's be honest rap and gangster rap was you know, at his highest, and, you know, being an R&B singer wasn't really, like, cool. Like, people, it wasn't cool to see. You know what I'm saying? And then, gateway to that, to the 2010s, it's like, everybody wants to be this hardcore rapper. Like, we were 12, 13, 14, 15, rapping up, rapping about bodies that we never even had. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, well, why are we talking about gang violence when we don't even participate 
in that. Now, some of my classmates were into that, but not me. So I was like, okay, and Nerdy Rap wasn't really in, like, Childish Gambino was starting to, you know, get his start. But even then, he was called, you know, a wigger, you know, a, a white boy. And I, you get know what I'm saying? He wants to talk like white, white boy. Until Redbone dropped, you know, then everybody was like, oh, my God, he's amazing, X, Y, Z, one, two, three. But, um, you know, music definitely played a big part in my life. Um, Bobby Brown is one of my favorite entertainers ever. Um, mainly because I can relate to him a lot. Um, I read the book and, you know, we share a lot of uh, features, physical features, let's just say that. And to see a dark-skinned uh, Black man um, doing music that was positive and wasn't rapping about taking somebody else's life, you get what I'm saying? And who was dancing like me. And, you know, I could just, I just love Bobby and I loved Usher. And I do love Chris Brown too. I saw him live 2019, amazing concert. But, um, you know, music just played a big part of my life and, you know, definitely, you know, just helped me out. All right. And now I'm here with you guys because of it. <laughs> yes. So how about you tell us what song you picked to talk about today and if you remember the first time hearing it? Um, Marvin Gaye, Just to Keep You Satisfied. Um, you know, Marvin Gaye... Um, he holds a very uh, special place in my heart and just in my life. Um, shout out to Aries Gang. You know, he's, we share a birth week together, same birth week. Um, just a lot of things that I could just relate. And the fact that he's he wasn't shy or embarrassed to expose himself in his music. Like, to say in that song that we couldn't stand the mental strain of the relationship. And it's just real. It's just real life. You know, he talks about the ups and the downs in life and having a relationship. And I had wished that Marvin Gaye, you know, his life would have been expanded um, physically. And I wish he was able to see his musical children, such as D'Angelo, um, Maxwell, Eric Benet, um, Kenny Lattimore, and, you know, other artists. Um, some of them I won't name because they're going through controversy and out of respect for the platform, I won't name them. But I do wish he was able to, you know, stick around and see them and see his work. Because sexual healing, let's be honest, right? Marvin Gaye wasn't done, in my personal opinion. And that was, you know, one of his last songs. And it was a major, major hit in the 80s. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. If I have this wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just love Marvin Gaye. And I just love that song because it's just real. And. Yeah, he's um everybody's grandpa, you know, musically. You know, if you do R&B, awesome. that's your musical grandfather. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm with you. But it's funny with this record. Um, <laughs> Every time I think about it, I think about when I laugh when he said, and the bitching, too. Like, it makes me laugh because it brings me back to, at least you remember the episode that we did with B. Cox, how you said how, when you heard downtown for the first time, it kind of made you laugh because it was something that was kind of, you know what I'm saying? That you like, he, he, that's funny. Ooh, yeah. what they talk about. So, you know, being the first time me listening to this song and he's saying, oh, and the bitching too. I'm like, I can't even say it, but he's saying it. So anytime I think about this record, I think about that. But when I also think about this, it's the first time that I think an artist was completely honest about what was going on in their household. Because we know before then, it was all about love this and love that and happy and this and this. And a lot of times, even people think about these songs like in the 60s that were very, like the Motown was like baby love and all that. But if you listen to these lyrics, it's not, it's very, it's a heartbreak. But it's such a beat that you don't think about it. But Marvin actually was the first one to say, y'all, this is what's going on in my house. I'm letting y'all know this is that my marriage is failing. Like, this is done. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just, whoo, God. It, yeah. it gives me chills when he just said, we try. God knows we try. Like, that's. And, and it's just, it's, it's, it's also interesting um, the, the way you worded it about what's going on. Because yes, he talked about what was going on in the world, yeah. yes. but also the personal is also political too. So all that matters. Right, right. Yeah, it matters what's going on 
in our bedroom and it matters what's going on at this protest. You know what I'm saying? Like it matters. And like, and, he, like he said on what's going on, he was like, love is love. But then he also said sex is love too. And then that's what he was putting in this that I have the vinyl for. I actually have it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I can stunt, yes. And um, like, he really breaks down what you just said. Like, he was like, yo, I got you politically about the world, but now I want to bring you kind of into my home a little bit. You know what I mean? And that's what he actually did. And I think that was just brilliant. And it's a blueprint, like you said, Saint, um, how Marvin... Now he gets to, I wish he was here to see his kids, his musical children, you know what I'm saying? Because of what he did, he created a blueprint. I know we all kind of go to hear my dear as that, as like, this is when people started putting their life into a song, into an album. But this was the first song that he did it on. Like he literally, he like musically, you feel him, lyrically, you feel him. And to think that this record was literally made with him and Anna that they wrote back in the 60s to the originals and the monitors. They did it. But the way they wrote it, it was like, ooh, you my baby. I love you. I want to keep you satisfied. I want to do that. But then Marvin just flipped this and was like, I'm taking all that out. And I'm about to rewrite this on about how my life is going. But I'm going to keep the kind of melody that I did for the originals, keep that in there. He even keep the background doves in there. He kept that in there. And it's just a completely different song. And you felt Marvin's spirit. That's one thing I love. And that's why Marvin's one of my favorite artists. Because you felt his spirit on the record. Like, it was just true honesty. And you can't get that in a lot of artists, to me. Yeah. And what I liked, um, with listening to this song, the part where I knew that this was the song was was just real is when he how he said set my soul that's I was like oh he meant that thing yeah that girl thing. oh listen I was just like oh my god that's the part you know what I'm saying because it's still central but it's still hurt like he's it's like there's love there he's like there's gonna be love there but I'm hurt I ain't know you were but he was like, you set my soul on fire. Like, that's, Marvin made it sexy, but he still felt the loneliness in it. And many artists can't do no shit like that. You know what I mean? So that's what I feel. Like, this song is just amazing. You know what I mean? And for you sake to pick it, it was just like, wow. If you would be your age and pick this, it was like, wow. You know what I mean? So Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I got to say one thing to Marvin. Um, You know, back in the day, there was a thing called mystery. And even with him cussing, about it. Stevie Wonder said in Rocket Love, you sent my black ASS my down to this earth. I didn't, I was like, wait, did he? Hold on, let me. Yeah. So oh, did. Right, right. What, were you, what were you saying? No, I was agreeing. I was like, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I was <laughs> like, he, he just, and then with Marvin Gaye with um, Soon I'll Be Loving You Again, right? I prefer the um, alternative version because it has more instruments and you yeah, can, his yeah, background yeah, is more pronounced. Yeah. And he said, when I get home, I'm going to give you some... I was like, wait, huh? Re, re, re. Wait, hold on, let me... Is, is this man talking about tasting? The, and, and then I'm like, it was mystery. Well, actually, I do have to give him credit for that too because um, I, my personal opinion, I could be wrong. He's probably the first or one of the first R&B artists to actually talking about pleasing a woman in that way. You get what I'm saying? And not only that, but he was able to do it, you know, with imagination. He wasn't mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. You had to use your, your big noggin here. And <clears throat> that's just one thing, excuse me, that's just one thing that I wish um, a lot of artists would do, just mystery. You know, right. um, there there is a balance. You know, I get everybody intimacy with everybody is their own personal thing. It's different for everybody. But if I got to hear about how you're eating booty and sucking toes and licking and slopping and eating whatever, um, like can you can you like, just some mystery, please? Can like yeah. how about, let me drink. I beg your pardon. Like finesse it uh, so much. Yeah. Um, I would say music. I would say starting in the 90s, like it just went 
left. There was no finesse. It was no at all. I mean, you had it here and there, but like I mean, as a generally speaking, like it it lost that. Like as much as I love the nineties, that I that's what all the finesse went out the fucking window. I agree. I agree. I agree with that. You know, and thank God we did get our Maxwells and D'Angelo's and and Jills and and all that to to, to bring that back to where you can still be sexy, you can still be provocative, but to do it in a creative, finesse kind of way. Yes, like Cromwell on Ice, literally. Yeah. Yeah, and that shit is downright explicit, but it's done in a way to where it's it's not, but it is. Right. Not. And, just, and, I, and I'd rather feel like that than just like, you know, let me be in your own. lot of what we got. Let me, let me put you on the couch, on the sofa, outside in the parking lot. Everybody, look, everybody's there. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, it's like, there's a way to do it. And you, and you can a, be provocative and you can be avant garde, but, but you use that pen and that voice in a way that makes it creative. That's, that that's, that's where I'm at. And just to think that with this, with Let's Get It On, he was st- it wasn't as provocative as the next album that he did, What I Want You. I Want You was there, but like you said, he's using his mind to get you, that intimacy. Like, it was just great. And that's going back to just to keep you satisfied. This could actually be a sexual song if you think about it. If you take out the lyrics and just get straight instrumental, you can put this draw on the instrumental and it can be just as sexy, to be honest. That's why, to me, when Way Marvin is singing on this joint, it still has a type of sensuality to it. Even though he's telling you about a failed marriage and, like, look, we need to, you know, all we can do is make each other, all we can do is try to be happy. But to me, like you brought up that part about that, you know, um, you know, you, uh, how do you say it? Uh, you set my soul on fire. Damn it. I forgot damn lyric. But uh, you set my soul on fire. It was like, that was sexy to me. Like Marvin, like, I want you to feel like, yo, she sets my soul on fire. Like she just gets me hot. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, nobody can finesse a record like that. That's why this is really a sad ass song. Just like we talked to Kamani about Distant Lover, the way he did that. People think that's a damn a sexy song and it isn't. Like, it isn't. but Marvin was the way, the way he flipped it. He was able to flip it to make it seem that way. But if lyrically you see it, you like, this motherfucker hurt. Like, and then you go to just to keep you satisfied, them horns and all this is very sensual, but Marvin is like, y'all, this is the end of my relationship. Like, this is done. You know what I mean? But I love how you said that. The, the, to have the intimacy and how it all changed. Because like you said, since nobody has said that. Everybody feel like in the 2000s, that's when things changed when it came sexually explicit. I'm like, uh, no. No. Yeah. Um, changing, changing, right. Changing faces. Um. Again, I'm not going to say you know who, but just let's just say the two women. Let's just say that, right? Yeah. Out of respect for you guys. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I stroke you up? I don't mind. Do you mind if I stroke you down? That's very uh blunt. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. um, that, that's all I'm just saying to you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of people try to say, oh, the two, th- no, the, the, our beloved 90s is when that raunchy, there. which has a place. Right, because I like plenty of it, but that's where the balance started to leave um, mu- music in general. Agreed. Like the balance left. Yes. Especially yes. you know, and then not far behind, like that balance left hip hop as well at the end of the nineties. Like that, yeah. that was like a death knell to a lot of uh, music, ma- mainstream speaking. It was. It like was. that was. 90s is where it went off the rails for me. I agree. As much as I love the 90s and as much good shit came, like we got some fuck shit too. That's true. But people don't want to have how they say <laughs> they don't want to have that conversation though. Exactly. Yeah. Nah. No, and, and not realizing, no, it we're not picking at the 90s. Every every decade has some fuck shit. It's good music and it's you know, right. Stuff you like and stuff you don't like, but 
the 90s yeah. is where I think it went off the rails for me. Yeah. yeah like my generation learned it from somebody. We didn't just, you know. <laughs> you got it in there, brother. Yeah. Didn't just... Even none of shit happened in a fucking vacuum. So it's like. <laughs> exactly. We didn't just woke up and said, I want to eat some booty. No, nah, somebody heard, somebody told them about it and put it inside the song. And then, you know. And it worked. And then obviously the mainstream fed onto it. And that's just what it was. Because just to think with Marvin, I want you was so provocative then. Like right. people were just like, oh my God, this album is so sexual. Like this is, you know what I mean? We listen to that now. This generation be like, wait, what? <laughs> like, right. this is, but I'm like, lyrically, if y'all listen to them lyrics, yes, it is. But yeah, like y'all said, Marvin finessed it. And that's how you got to do for real. And then also the reason why all of Marvin's sad ass songs still sound sensual mm -hmm. is he just was a sensual guy. That's just, he couldn't help Period. it. He Period. Couldn't, he couldn't hide it. Even when you listen to the political records, they still sound smooth and sexy. Like, what's that about? Right. Like, that's just, it, it was just innate. It was just, it was just, it wasn't, that's just who he was. Yes. Vocally and, and emotionally, he's an emotional guy. Yep. Yep. And I can connect to that very well. So, <laughs> no. stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Oh, man. It's great. Love this joint. Love this yeah. joint. Yeah. I didn't go in on the horns, everybody. See? Yeah. And what I love, I know we just talk about the song, but I, I love that. The, the song following is just the instrument, you know, the instrumentation. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it felt like a good next song. Like that was an album sequence that made a lot of sense to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I just pulled out my heart. Now let's just be quiet for a second. Yeah, yeah. See, that's a lost art. Um, people, as Beyonce said, people don't know how to make albums anymore. Um, that, that part. If if why I I just got okay right. I'm gonna give. Okay, I'm going to segue to him, right? If I just got my heart broken, right? Mm -hmm. You would have to make it sound really, really, really good for me to want to go to a club or a party. That's why I give Usher a credit with You Don't Have to Call. It still has that, you know, sad part like, oh, we were together, but now you don't have to call. It's okay, girl, because I'm going to be all right tonight. I'm going out with my, you know, people. He was able to do it right. right. Album sequencing, it, it's important. You're supposed to take me on a journey. This is a... Um, auditorial movie that I'm listening to and playing in my head, a story. You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You can definitely tell when somebody is doing something for a quick buck. And, you know, fortunately with my uh, background in DJing and, you know, mixing, mastering, I know how to actually sequence um, transitions. Oh my God. Um, what? <laughs> why? First of all, let's get with the DJs. Why Why are people not transitioning records when DJs oh. anymore? Like sometimes you can just let a transition play for a whole good two minutes. Not even just <laughs> okay. S second of all, um, the artist, um, transitioning interludes. Like, you know, I know people, you know, don't like Jacquees. I, I, I like he's he's okay to me. He's cool, to me. but I understand why people don't. You know what I'm saying? I like all music except country, but I appreciate everything. I love to know people's perspective. So I get to understand why people don't like Jacquees and I get why people do like him. But one thing I will give him credit for is that he still has interludes in those little breaks inside his projects. You get what I'm saying? Regardless if it's an album or a mixtape. <clears throat> Excuse me. And an interlude is just like, it's just important. Like, what, what happened? I mean, I know what happened, but just it's lazy. <laughs> stop, stop being lazy. Just stop. Real, real. Real, yeah. Man, we we like we it it, it don't feel bad you venting. We we like to let this is a spot for people to vent too, right? About what they feel about music because I I I like to hear all perspectives whether whether it's an artist I like or don't like 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 you said I want to understand which is part of why um that I came up with the idea for this show is because I want to know why why people like what they like. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not here to be like, why you like that? I only do that to JR. But um, right. Right. but it but it be because I want to understand why 
with JR is more like when he said he don't like something and I'm just like, I need I need you to show your work. Right. And, and not just because I'm being an ass, that's part of it, but also I'm just genuinely curious of what in your brain or what in your life experience made this appealing to you or made you reject this. Like I'm like, I love to know the human psyche as it relates to music. I think that's wildly interesting. Yes. So, um, so thank you for sharing that actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. Do you guys do you guys like Jacquees? No, absolutely no. not. But but it's don't. not for me. That's what it is. He's, his music is it's not for me. I just do I'm the not going down the boy like at all. You know what I'm saying? But if this is what the, <sighs> the music that people feeling, I'm not a hater. Like that's your thing. Cool. You know what I mean? But this is not. This is not for me. I do the. I just wanted to mess with. I'm like, I know they're going to say no. I just want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with them, but I, you know, no dis- But I, I just don't down people for what they like, right. even though, though it don't match up with mine. Right. Except for JR. So yeah. I just. I'm the, right. Y'all see, keep catching that, right? Just me, right? Got it. <laughs> but I, I don't begrudge anybody their, uh, yeah. their likes or their dislikes, but right. I do like to have discourse to understand why. Because I've been, and, and JR has too. Sometimes somebody come on the show. We've had a few songs that me and JR don't care for that people pick. And it made me see them from a different light. And now I can listen to those songs. Exactly. Well, and right. also it's putting me in the mind of that person that took their time to come on my on our show. And I have now it has a positive memory attached to it. it well said, ma'am. Drop mic. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I like, you know, talking to different age groups. As you can obviously tell, I've been around a lot of uh, old folks. Um, you know, just learning. Um, okay, I'm not a stan, and I'm proud. I was never one with stan culture. I do love Chris Brown, but he does have his flaws as an artist. That's okay. Even Michael Jackson, he's like, he's a perfectionist, right? Mm-hmm. There'd be sometimes we'd hear his music on the radio, and it's like, I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? I need to correct this, 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 and that. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> with Jacquees, I get it. You know, the auto tune that just doesn't does do it for everybody. You know, the <clears throat> the e e e e e yeah, that doesn't do that. That, that did it. That that's it. <laughs> and I, I I understand. Like, and the sampling would be the um I like it, but again, I get it. You know, it's mm. I understand, and I'm okay with that. Right. And I like that. I'm okay with that. I like because then that corrects me because then when I have my own art and when I make my stuff, I'm like, okay, I need to know how to cater to this audi- audience and this audience. And I do wish, um, you know, I would just love to hear an actual acoustic album from him with R&B veterans. Like, it's just him, maybe like Donnell Jones or some other people. That's just from my perspective. That's just what I would like to, you know, hear and see from him. <clears throat> and from modern R and B artists too, like where are the ins- okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop with the instrument. <laughs> but yeah, and 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 it and it it goes to and it's it's something. As soon as I I read it, it has just resonated with me. And it was, you can't expect everyone to like you. You don't like everyone. So why would you expect everyone to like you? And I think that goes for music, like. You expect somebody, to love, but you don't love everything. So there, there's there's space for ups and down and nuance in Thanks. conversations. But I digress because I will be here for another hour. Yeah, we will. Because <laughs> he, he done hit something. Yeah, we need to bring him on for a live. We do a live. This could That's be our next topic. Is. That would be fun. Yes, yeah. bring him on for a live. We need yeah. that. He, so we could just freely just talk talk. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we thank you, Saint, for joining us. If you would like to be found, how could people find you in these internet streets? At Saint underscore Joe Joseph. I that is my Instagram handle and that is my TikTok handle. Um, I do dance videos. I also DJ and make music mi- mixes. Um, I do um edit audio. So if you need any of that, uh, you know, everybody hit me up. Um, you know, my Instagram. And thank you so much for having me. Um, this was a this did not feel like forty something minutes. This was a very quick episode. <laughs> no, oh, this you're amazing. right. Like, yo, this, you ain't lying because this is like forty minutes, and it did not feel like it at all. <laughs> yeah, this is this is amazing. This is a CD. <laughs> this is awesome. 
and it's just a privilege to be surrounded by uh, beautiful people, especially beautiful melanated uh people. And Talk about uh, it. Actually, you look uh, very gorgeous today. Um, I was trying to compliment you. Girl. And um, you know, um, yeah, I would love to see a uh, Chastity next time. Um, she's very gorgeous, very gorgeous to me. Um, <laughs> but if you know the meme, then you know where that's from. But you know, yeah, it's just you know, thank you. I just love the vibe. Um. We need more stuff like this where you can openly talk. And I appreciate you guys opening, you know, your views to me as Generation Z to get my perspective. And, you know, just I appreciate it, you know. No Be quiet because I can go rant about, I know some ministry people. Oh, my God. And, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, we not. Die. No. <laughs> yes. And, and we I mean also- personally. Go ahead. Gotcha. And we also thank all our viewers for hanging out with us and, you know, just learning and loving about music. It's, yes. it's, yes, it is it is our joy and we're so glad for y'all to share that with us. Yes. And like, share and subscribe and tell a friend and bring us some more cousins over here. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we will yes. catch y'all on. <laughs> I like this stuff. Uh, and we will catch y'all on the next catch that yeah. peace <laughs> and love and love that <laughs>